Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's project is these pair of well-worn, well-loved Allen Edmonds. Now, what we're going to do first, we're going to try to get rid of these salt stains that you're looking at. We're going to remove all those salt stains, clean the uppers, add a little bit of color, resole them, and make them look a little better. All right, so let's get started. All right, so these laces uh, have seen better days. Normally, you know, we replace the laces anyway, but um, this one really needs to be replaced because this is dead. Now, after um, these shoes are dropped off, I noticed something that I didn't see it at the time of taking them in, which is the back of the heel, the inside of the heel. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. You see that right there? The heel lining is just worn off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and replace that heel lining in the back and just kind of give it, give it away to the customer. He's a young kid. And um, he's just learning that quality shoes that need to be taken care of. He loved these shoes, just didn't take care of them a little bit. That's okay. We'll teach him a little bit how um, how they're taken care of and make them look better once they get done. Now, about these salt stains. So, what I first do, I have uh, white vinegar. Okay, it, stabil it stabilizes the the salt. The stains and then what we're going to do today we're going to give it a bath is what we call it we call it a Swedish bath this uh, name was uh, given to this process by a friend of ours in um, Sweden which he introduced us to us how to do it and it uh, works pretty good, so we uh, coined it the Swedish bath, or the Swedish wash. So, once that's wiped down, we're going to mix three different kind of cleaners, and um, literally soak the shoes in it. Make sure the uppers get saturated, and then we're going to scrub it while it's wet. And then um, we're going to let them sit and dry for a couple of days before we come back to the next, next process. All right. That should take care of that. All right. I'm not wearing my apron today because we're closed. Some of you guys are probably wondering. All right, let's continue. All right, once we got the mixtures in the sink, I literally put a shoe right into the water. It's a lukewarm water, not hot at all, not too cold, just medium. And make sure that the, the uppers absorb the water the cleaners once you got that going I'm gonna take a, just a nylon bristle brush scrub it down now you got to be careful though not all leathers not all shoes can withstand this kind of treatment so don't be going dipping your shoes into, into the tub of water or a tub of cleaners, whatever. It's not that difficult, but you got to know what you're doing. So once you got that scrubbed down, some tissue paper or, or newspaper, just to stuff the toes a little bit. That'll kind of absorb 
the water from within. Then once you've got that done, take a piece of paper towel, wet the paper towel. Now some people really wrap the whole thing in paper towel. I don't think it's necessary because the salt stains were mainly on the sides, nothing really in the back. So once you got this saturated, you get a, just a plastic bag, just a regular old grocery bag. Get all the air out of it and put a nice, uh, nice knot. So keep that, keep that moisture inside. Now I'll keep that in there for about two days. All right, and let it, um, then let it just work itself. And once we come back. We'll take them out of the bag and we'll let them dry for a little bit longer. All right, let's continue. All right. Now it's still moist, right? So that's when the shoe trees come in handy. Remove that. Now, if you look, there's no more salt stains, that's just faded, that's nothing. Salt stains are gone. Alright, so we put these in here. I guess I should remove the paper from inside. That might help. Just leave them like this for a couple days until they dry then we'll start cleaning it again the surface of it and then applying some probably dye just to kind of get that surface a little uh, a little more in a brown shade all right let's continue so while we're, at, we're if I can speak while we are at this stage now what we can do is is kind of gently massage the leather because it's still wet, remember, it's still a little bit moist. So what this does is it gets rid of those creases that are that are on the front. Now some people will uh, will use like a deer bone, believe it or not, or back of a spoon. I think just massaging it in, trying to kind of iron out those wrinkles. And when it dries with the shoe trees inside, it'll look much, much better than what it did. Man, these shoes are going to look nice. I know they don't look like much now, but once they get done, they'll be very nice. All right, let's continue. All right, so at this stage, we're gonna clean the surface with a little bit of, a little bit of thinner. Or acetone would work also. I mean, there's some other cleaners that would do the trick as well. This is basically just removing some old polish and wax buildup. Now after the cleaning that, that we did, we let these dry thoroughly, okay? Now after this, Normally, I uh, I apply some moisturizers to the leather, but um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a um, I'm going to put a leather dye on top of this to act as a base coat. I want it to go into the pores of the leather, 
and then I'll go ahead and condition afterwards after the you know the dye dries because we need we need some sort of a we need some sort of a color on the shoes we can polish them at this stage but polish is going to be only temporary so you want to add you want to put down a base coat of of a brown dye where it goes into the pores and it's more permanent than than polishing <clears throat> you're gonna have to condition these at least two to three times because the leather is going through hell and back with all this cleaning that we've been doing now not all not all shoes get this thoroughly cleaned because you know not all of them have salt stains and damage to the uppers But still, it's a good idea to moisturize the leather to bring it back a little bit, and it will come back too. It's not um, it's not damaged to a point where we can't bring it back. We haven't even begun to talk about you know working on the soles yet because this is basically taking care of the uppers. All right, so it's not too bad. All right, so we'll let these dry and come back and put a coat of dye on them. All right, let's continue. All right, so you see the difference, right? That's still not done yet. This is just a base coat, right? This will take on like a, when it dries, it, it'll take on like a bronze tone and you got to buff that off. And then you can apply your conditioners, your creams, whatever you want to do afterwards. So what I'm using here is a Feebing's leather dye. I usually get these in a in a liter form, but I ran out and I had to grab one of the retail items that I sell, which are these small bottles, just to do the job. So it's all right. Sometimes we have to improvise. Well, I put two coats on that one because it literally absorbed into the pores and in order to get it an even tone I had to do it twice now originally this shoe was not really a dark dark brown it was more of like a chocolate brown and um when we get done with it, it's going to be a little bit darker than what it was. I made sure it was okay in the beginning with the customer. Just say, look, it's going to be dark brown when we get done with it. I think he'll be happy with it once it gets done. Hell, it's much better than what it was, I can tell you that. <laughs> we'll tint the, the darkness a little bit lighter. Not an issue. Probably going to say, people are going to ask me, oh, you should be wearing some gloves when you're dying shoes. I don't care. My hands are staying anyway. It doesn't matter. Well, Actually, I, it does matter if I'm going out, like on a weekend or something. I'll try to keep my hands clean. Most of the time, I wear them. I'm here. Where are my gloves? I wear these. I mean, these are, I don't know, at least a couple of years old. 
Oh, the hell with it. Maybe I'll wear them now. Can't find the other one. Oh, here we go. All right. Now I got them on. See these knuckles right here? That's from scraping on the machine while I'm while I'm sanding stuff. Oh Lord. All right, so we're gonna let these dry for a couple of hours. And then we'll come back and uh, I'll show you guys, you know, when we're applying conditioners and, and all that. All right, let's continue. See, now I can't turn off the, the thing without my, with my gloves on. I'll do it with my knuckle. <laughs> all right, so today we have Big four conditioner. Okay. Now it's in a uh, it's in another bottle, but it's big four. I just apply this on there with the uh, sponge, or you can use your hands. I like using a sponge. You don't have to use too much, just, you know, a little goes a long way. to sit maybe about 20 minutes or so we'll come back and buff it make sure you get the tongue area there looking good not too bad all right let's continue all right so now we can finally start working on the bottoms now the top left comes off now some of you are maybe concerned that I'm wearing a scarf it catches on the machines or the buffers. Well, I'm not running the machines with this on. Just a little cold in here this morning. And I will remove it once, uh, once I start working on the machines. Now the heel base comes off. We'll save that heel base. It's still in pretty good shape. The, we slice the sole off. Once the sole comes off, we can inspect the inside and see what it looks like. Some of the older ones uh, will have a wooden shank. Not all of them. Not all Allen Edmonds do. Now this appears to be in pretty good shape, so we'll go ahead and reuse it. And then we'll just go ahead and um, clean the cork and recork it. As you can see, there's not much left. It's compressed to about nothing. We'll replace all that, put the shank back in, and then we'll go ahead and start gluing the soles on. All right, let's continue. So this is a sheet of cork, okay? Basically, we cut it out to glue it in there like that. Now, what most manufacturers have, it's called hot cork. 
it's literally it's like a putty almost right they'll um they'll go ahead and um and squeeze that in there and then they just kind of form it into that little cavity i mean is it a is it a necessity thing i don't think so because the important thing is that this area gets filled in and it kind of le levels the surface so whether you have a hot cork or sheet the end result is the same it's not a necessity most manufacturers do that I guess it's a little bit cheaper easier for them I'm not sure but repair shops usually don't have those hot cork machines so we end up using this basically we end up using it in sheets or it also comes in little uh, cutout pieces which are like these right here so it depends on what we're doing we'll use different types but the bottom line is the cork is cork and it serves a purpose and it works just fine all right so we'll let that sit for a minute and let that dry and then we'll work on the other one now most manufacturers will um, will use a leather heel base. Heel base is this. Remember we took off. Now Al Nedman's doesn't do that. It's fiberboard. Basically, it's paper. Now I know some of you are like really. Yeah, most manufacturers do that. The good ones, yes. The, you know, the high-end shoes, they'll use stacked, stacked leather heels. Now, am I going to put a stacked leather heel on this one? No, I'm going to reuse, well, I was going to reuse the same heel base, but it, this one's in a little bit bad shape, so I'll put new ones on there. So, um... Basically, I, I do a lot of Allen Edmonds, and um, I found a manufacturer who does, who makes their heels for them. Heel bases, I should say. So I bought a bunch. This way, when I get done with it, it's the same as exact as what the customer had. It. Now, can I put leather heel bases on there? Of course I can, but at additional cost. Customer, customer agrees to it, I'll be glad to do it. But if not, then we keep it as original. All right, so now we have an issue here. This one, the shank is broken, okay? I can't reuse this. This is dead, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a metal shank in there instead of uh, this wooden one it had. Now, some people worry about metal shanks as far as when they're traveling metal detectors through the airport. I'm like, it's not a big deal. Take your shoes off anyway. Well, most of the time you do. I guess these, uh, these people who travel a lot, they'll have security passes or something that'll get them bypassed through uh, security. Either way, it's not a big deal. We put a metal shank in there. It'll give them a little more support. We've got this one here. This is your basic metal shank. Then you've got, let's see what we have here. Then you got these big monsters, which we're gonna do basic one this time. I think that particular one is a little overkill for this shoe. So we'll do the same on the other shoe. We'll get rid of that wooden shank and, and do the same job on both of them. All right, let's continue. Okay, now when the soles are stitched on, you know, when we remove it, we have to remove these stitches that are on the welt, okay? Sometimes we are lucky where the stitches are kind of sitting on top of the welt, welt. They're not countersunk. We can remove it with this little tool right here. Now it's not sharp, 
okay? But what it does is it, we run it right on top of the thread and it usually comes loose. So let's give it a try. Let's take the scarf off just in case. We don't want any accidents. coming off. Not too much pressure is applied on there. I mean, it doesn't hurt, you see? You can run your hand on it. But you gotta be careful though. If the welt is a little loose, this is gonna make it you know, with a little pressure applied on top of it, we'll loosen it up more. So just kind of inspect the weld when you remove the sole. And if it's in good shape, you can go ahead and use something like this to pick the stitches. Boy, this is a really time saver when you're doing a lot of shoes to take these stitches out. And that's it. That's from one pair of shoes. They're all stitches. Now, problem is that some repair shops don't don't do that, which is not good. You're supposed to pick the stitches. So what happens is you keep on resoling the shoes and then stitching and stitching and stitching. It's going to mess up that welt right there. Then I have to replace the entire welt, which is this shoe here. You see the welt was removed, which is more costly to do. It's all hand stitching. Mm -hmm. And it's not a necessity. I mean, you, you, should, you should be able to clean that stitches up on that welt pretty good and, and you can restitch it again. It's not a problem. If, it, if the job is done right, you should be able to get good, I don't know, maybe four times of resoling, maybe even more. I've done a lot more in the past before. Now, a couple of, you know, like the heel block, for example, right? How it, how it gets damaged sometimes. You know, and it has to be replaced. You can't, you can't, you can't use the same one. Unless you kind of build it up and glue it together. But it's a lot easier and better if you replace that. It looks better, too. The problem is, it gets costly right so you're giving an estimate to the customer when the shoes come in and then you run into these situations where you need to do more to it and um, unfortunately you know sometimes customers don't don't like that which i don't i don't blame them you know set of new shanks set of heel bases it's not much but when you multiply that by um, a lot that you're going to do well you know it cuts into your profit base so on one hand you know you have to you have to be you have to be nice about situations like this normally I don't really I don't really charge anything for that I mean if it if the heel brace if, if the heel if the heel block or the heel base breaks well just just replace it it's okay and just let the customer know, okay, this is the situation. And if the most customers, you know, they're very nice about, you know, understanding that things happen. And sometimes they'll offer to pay more, at least for the material, what it costs you. You know, not necessarily to make the profit, you know, but I, I normally don't. I, you know, I don't, I don't take anything extra. 
And then I, I always I always tell them that if it was a big issue, I would have called them and let them know, and we would have discussed it some more. Now, you see that shank, right? You see how high it's sitting? So we have to curve that a little bit toward the shape of that the original shank. So what we do is we hammer it down right in the middle. And it gives it a little bit of better shape because your hammer right here and it's kind of pushing that down okay <clears throat> then we put the cork in Beautiful. All right, let's continue. Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to cut out the sole. A little bit larger than the original. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp the Alan Edmund logo right in the shank area. I do that before, before I glue it onto the shoe. Now, this customer wanted the house leather. Which is a which is a not bad option, okay. And um, we'll go ahead and cut this out, and then stamp it, and then we're ready to put it on the shoe. All right, let's continue. All right, so this is my embossing machine. We put our little plate there. This gets this is very hot. It usually gets about 800 degrees of of heat wet the sole down a little bit just to soften it up and then line it up here center it and press it down and once it gets sanded it'll look a little better than that all right let's continue all right so now Get the glue on the soles. Kind of break this in a little bit so it'll be a little bit more flexible when the customer's wearing it. I try to center that logo. Solid. It's looking good. It's looking like a shoe now. Basically what I'm doing now is making that the welt and the sole airtight around the edges. So now I'm going to put in the press. So what I like to do, wet that footbed down a little bit. Okay. Kind of softens the leather. So when it presses, it kind of doesn't level it out completely, but it does it does help a little bit. Let me see if I can show you guys what the press does. So we put the shoe on there. Where are you? There you go. Basically, this comes in different shapes and sizes. Put that on here. All right, and we press the button and comes down. That stays there about two minutes or so.
that's Mr. Donnie there. Say hi, Mr. Donnie. Mr. Donnie, say hello. He's a little deaf, too. Hello. He's not deaf. I'm just messing with him. Donnie's an old, uh, an old friend. She comes out and gives me a hand at the shop sometimes. Cause I can't, I can't do everything. You know, he helps me keep it, keep the place organized and stuff like that. So by the time the other shoe gets ready, we'll work on this one. Get this one ready. Solid. It's looking like a nice shoe. This is going to be beautiful when it gets done. And once we got these soles hammered on and and cut off, we're going to start working on inside of the heel. Just called heel lining. All right, let's continue. All right, so basically we make a lot of uh, paper templates of the leather that we want to cut, right? And um, made one for the back of the heel here. And transfer that to a piece of leather. Now the color might not be exactly the same as the original lining. But I think at this stage... I can make it closer, but it's okay. It's it's a little bit lighter than what it was. It's okay. It'll be fine. So once we cut this piece of leather out, I fold it in half and put a little notch in the middle here. That way I know that's the center. Okay. Where's my shoes? Now, sometimes I remove the back piece, sometimes I don't. If this is pretty thin, okay, and if it's not in bad shape, I'll, I'll leave that alone and um, basically put it right on top of it. There's been times where I've, I've removed it and then put a new one on top of it. But sometimes I'll go ahead and put it on top, depending on the situations. Now the edges, these edges right here, I'm going to thin down a little bit, okay? And we glue it in place. Once it's glued in place, we're going to go ahead and stitch the top right there. And then um, we'll go ahead and cut the excess off and put some uh, put some little dressing, like a little dye around the edges. And that'll be it for the heel lining. All right. Let's glue it in place. I see a lot of jobs that this type of job that um, they glue the hell out of the inside. And then um, you have a lot of you have a lot of glues that are visible. Oh, that little notch you line that up in the back of the heel here, so you know it's centered. So, anyway, as I was saying, I mean, if you're going to over glue something, which is okay, but clean up the stuff that that's visible, so it doesn't look like crap. It's incredible, you know. I I, I see things like that. And you can automatically tell about the person who did the repair, you know, 
it's it's not cool you know it's 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 something that tells a lot about you and um, if you're not careful about the little details that are visible I mean imagine what shortcuts you take that customers can't see if you don't take pride in what you do then don't do it do something else do something else that you love Alright, that's in there. Alright, now on the sewing machine. We'll go ahead and stitch that up and we'll cut the excess off. Alright, let's continue. This is basically a cylinder arm machine. Lately it's been acting up. It's a brand new machine. Oh, about a year old maybe. It's been acting up for some reason. I don't know why. Donnie, I'm videotaping. This didn't turn out too bad. Where's my other shoe? Not too bad. Alright, let's continue. No, I'll throw it away. All right, let's continue.
we've got the stitching done. All right, let's continue. These are the new heel blocks. It's exactly what Alan Edmonds uses on their new shoes. This is just a pattern I put on the bottom of the soles. It's just aesthetics, it's nothing really special. Do I have to do it? No, I don't have to do it, but I do it anyway. Cool. All right, so once the bottom is finished, stain them and pattern, whatever you want to do, we'll go ahead and put the heel block on. Heel base, heel block. Okay. Now this gets nailed with threaded nails or ring shank nails seven of them now it can't be too long or else it'll poke right through the inside of the heel and we don't want that most of the most of the shoes I nail from the inside of the heel and it covers with a piece of leather called a sock lining this particular Allen Edmonds doesn't have a sock lining Therefore, you can't nail it from the inside. Now, basically, these nails are holding on to the leather sole. Okay? Now, it shouldn't go anywhere. It's, it's nice and tight. Now, we'll crimp the edges here to get it airtight. So, there's no, there's no gap in between the base and the sole. Now, we'll go ahead and trim this. We'll glue it. We'll attach the top lift on, trim the edges, and final cleaning, well, no cleaning, final conditioning and polishing, we'll be done. All right, let's continue. Just putting a little bit of wax on the toe area to give it a little bit of shine. Not too much. We don't want to make it. We don't want to spit shine it or get a mirror gloss where you can see a reflection. But give them a nice, uh, nice shine. So we're using Saphir. Okay. And I'll keep this up for about maybe about 20 minutes or so. And then we'll be ready with the shoes. Now, I did something different at the bottom. You see how rough that is? 
I let the dye dry a little bit too much and um, and then I buffed it and gave it another coat on top of it and then it gave me this I don't know I kind of like it I didn't like it at first but it's kind of growing in on me usually I make it really nice and smooth now I don't I don't put wax throughout the whole shoe constantly just a little bit okay but mainly focusing on the toes and the back of the heel where it's not flexible because you can't really put uh, you can't really put wax all over the place and like build it up because it'll start when it starts flexing it'll start cracking right there so just a little bit just to give it a that natural shine and then focusing on the heel back of the heel and also at the toe area all right let's continue all right welcome back so we're done with this project I think it turned out pretty good. So I'm going to try to get the customer's reaction. I hope he comes in on time before I edit the video. Now, if you look, if you look real close, it's not one tone dark brown. It's got a lot of variations, which was what we wanted. I darkened the tone a little bit, added a little bit of black at the toe area, kind of give it a little burnished look. No more salt stains. All right. Well, thanks for joining, and we'll see you again next time. Take care.